Hello, my friends. It is Ray over at Cigar Climatology reporting in from the Grimp and Meyer once more. Uh, my friend uh, Rob over there at uh, Friends of Fabanos, while well, he was asking for a um, free-for-all review this weekend. So I've been kind of debating on what uh, what I wanted to smoke. Um, here on the table, well, I'm going to probably be trying to wire up my uh, test box here. I think I'm actually going to move that out of the shop, believe it or not. So uh, uh, some history is being made over at Cigar Climatology today. I'm going to unwire all the data logs and all the garbage from it. Uh, put a new controller into uh, into a new box and um, go ahead and get this guy moved into my office inside the house so I can start on a Generation 14 cooler here over here in the corner. But that's not really the point today. Um, so what to smoke? That's really a good question. Now, for the longest time, I've been threatening to smoke one of these uh, Monte Cristo uh, 80 anniversary cigars uh, that, uh, that were courtesy of Rob. But, you know, I, I just, I don't know that I'm going to do that. I took them out, looked at them a little bit. I've opened up the package so that they can breathe. I've had them for a while. They should definitely be acclimatized. They've, I've, I've had them now for months. But somehow I was thinking Partagas today. And I, I got a brand new cab of Siri du Connoisseur number ones. These are ORE November 03. And uh, these are nice looking cigars. Or I'm just kind of wondering whether or not I should just bust these open and pull one out today. Oh, they smell heavenly, let me tell you. And uh, and they, they really look grand. They're really, really, really nice cigars. So I don't know. I'm thinking about that a little bit. Or last but not least, one of my really ostensible favorites is the uh, Partagas uh, Siri du Connoisseur number one. And, and I don't mean the I don't mean the cheesy remake from Cava Cuba. I'm talking about the the real deal here. Um, and and this is a an, an amalgamated box here. Um, it's uh, what I've done is I've taken a lot of open boxes of these. This is literally the last of them that I have left. And uh, some of them, depending upon where I got them. Uh, we're actually a bandless, um, but I just don't know. These are uh, these are one of my really have really been one of my favorite cigars. And there's one here that has this. It's kind of looks kind of funky, but it's got this brindle coloring to it, which is just kind of drawing me. Not really a lot of bouquet. I've had these cigars for a very long time. This box is uh, from 2000, and this may or may not be out of the original box. Man, this guy is hard. And hopefully it will draw. So uh, this is the direction I think I'm going. I'm, I mean, the band you can just see here literally is just its going to come right off. So these cigars, like I said, I've owned a long time. They're really well shrunk up. Um, Let's go ahead and clip this one and give it a try. What do you say? Give me one second because what I'm going to do is uh, actually the monitor on one of my machines over there is flipping on and off. It's driving me nuts. So I'm going to put this away and I'm going to put these other cigars uh, back in the humidor from where they came. Well, I'm glad I got up because uh, actually I brought out a box of uh, Ramona Jonas Petit Coronas and set them over there on my machine and uh, if I didn't I probably would have left those things out and forgot about them. Not that that would have been murder, but it is, uh, it's a tough day for cigars in here today. Um, although I got to admit, I like it dry. It's, uh, it's 85, it's almost 86 degrees in here currently. But it's really not too bad, and even without the fan on, uh, like I said, it's not that bad because it's really dry. 
It's uh, 25 RH in here. It was actually down to about, I don't know, 13 RH a little bit earlier today. So uh, maybe with the humidors open while I was looking for cigars or for whatever reason, uh, the, uh, the relative humidities come up in here a little bit. But, uh, well, my machines are plotting away and doing their thing. Let's, uh, let's talk about this cigar here a little bit. Um, so, this is a 2000, one of those dreaded years. And I sure hope it's good. Uh, Partagas Selection Provada number one. I should probably get my camera out here and take a couple of still pictures of it. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, really, really firm. Let's see if it draws. Because this thing, uh, God, I'd hate to drop it. It would probably go to pieces. It's, uh, this thing feels like a, a depleted uranium sabot. Nice cut, really clean. Didn't do any damage to the head. Mm. Stiff, definitely stiff. Definitely stiff. Let's uh, let's go get the still camera. I'll get a couple of stills of this guy, then we'll get it. Uh, we'll get it lit up. See you back in a minute. Well, I'd better get this started because it's actually getting pretty toasty in here without the fan on. So uh, let's give this uh, bugger a light up and let's see what happens. Now, I have to tell you, anticipation uh, for me is always really great with these cigars. If, uh, if you've read any of my writing, you, you might know that uh, these have always been one of my favorites, if not my favorite cigar. So hopefully I don't end up having to pan this one. Um, because I've always loved these. These are just a, a prized and cherished cigar for me. Extremely stiff draw. Again, a lot of you guys probably wouldn't like this. Just stiff, just from the draw. It means it's going to be a slow smoker, but that's okay by me. Well, I have to tell you, again, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I almost always get hit immediately with something I like when my palate is fresh and, 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 I've, got, uh, and I've got a decent cigar. Even if the cigar ultimately turns out to be not all that good, right on the fresh palate to me, my first taste of tobacco is always pretty good, and this is no exception. I immediately got hit with some lemongrass. Um, don't know how else really to describe it. Kind of a citrusy taste. Something that I really don't taste all that often, but uh, these cigars have historically been incredibly complex for me. So uh, you'll never know what I might come up with with this cigar uh, just due to the fact that uh, I've always found them really, really complex. I'm definitely going to have to work at this one to get smoke out of it. But so far I'm enjoying the taste. It's, it's a very rich citrusy flavor with, uh, with a considerable amount of cream. Um, boy, I really don't know how to describe it. When I was a kid, I used to like these... these um, 
creamy orange popsicles, believe it or not. And uh, while that might sound incredibly cheesy, not for a cigar, that's what it that's what it tastes like to me. It's almost like an orange cream, for lack of a better term. Very interesting. There's definitely a ton of converted tannins in this cigar. I mean, I, I, I can taste that. Uh, this guy was probably very, very different um, when, you know, when fresh. Uh, the, the, the finish on the cigar, I don't know, I really like it. And I, I, I caught the term from uh, one of the guys on FOH, uh, rather than call them mottled, which is essentially what I used to call them, I think uh, brindle is actually a really, really wonderful uh, descriptor for how this cigar looks. The, uh, the draw is, it, you know, is a bit of a deterrent, even, even for me. The, the, the cigar is incredibly stiff drawing. I do think that when it heats up a little bit, it's probably going to open up some, but I'm just going to have to work away at it slowly, I think, and, uh, and, and see what transpires. I'm drawing on the cigar very slowly, but I'm, I'm using three actually very slow, very deep puffs. From, from the amount of smoke that I'm getting off the cigar, you'd think that I was tasting nothing. But as I've opined many times in the past, oftentimes, some of these stiff drawing cigars that you appear to get almost zero smoke from can have just an incredibly smooth complex flavor and, and this is no exception um, i'm glad to say that it's not letting me down it's just it, it's just again it's primarily that 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 uh, creamy citrusy taste i can taste the old tannins a, a, a hint of tea it's, uh, so far, so far it's a 10. The, uh, the, the cigar has a, a hint of acidity and really a, a, a tremendous mouthfeel. Um... There's no pepper per se, but a bit of a tingle on the palate. And uh, again, I, I just I'm I'm for I'm at a loss for words. The it, it's it's actually difficult to to pick out flavors in the the medley. And I, I suppose I can tend to make a, a uh, music analogy with so much going on in, with, with a symphony of flavors, it, it's difficult to pick out one particular woodwind or one particular string instrument. And, uh, and that's kind of what I'm experiencing here. You know, again, so far, just great. I'll take a couple of more puffs at it, and then I think rather than do my building here, which will simply distract me from the cigar, I'm going to go grab myself a beer, I'm going to go grab the dog, and go sit out on the back patio and enjoy a 90 degree day in October. Uh, just all kinds of things going on here. Uh, that, like a Monty that I smoked the other day, a dry, almost a, a, a dry a cocoa powder type taste. It's uh, it, 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 it's actually too good to stop talking about. The hint of sweet is also there. I'm, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed. 
um, there's a real reason why I've always loved these cigars. They've never, ever, ever ceased to deliver a, a just over-the-top smoking experience. You smoke a cigar like this and you really wonder what magic was put into the damn thing. Why every cigar that you pick up just doesn't taste like this. And, and I can't explain it. I have no idea why. But there have only been several handfuls of cigars that, that I've smoked that really have this kind of, of intensity and complexity. It's, uh, they, they've been singularly unique. The draw is opening up a little bit now. Kind of just want to see how dense the ash is. Well, it's it's not really, not really. I thought it would be considerably uh, more dense than that. But the burn is nice. Um, there's a nice convex, act, uh, convex ash. I'm looking for things just to talk about because the, the, the taste is overwhelming. I'm going to stop uh, running off at the mouth. I'm going to head outside, maybe touch up the burn on this just a little bit. I don't know why because it's just it's doing really well. Wow. All I can say is wow. Let me go grab myself a beer, take my opener, and uh, I don't know, I'll be back in 30 minutes or so and we'll talk a little more. Thanks for tuning in. <clears throat> so it hasn't really been a half an hour. It's only been maybe 15 minutes and, and, and quite frankly I just couldn't wait. So I had to bring the camera outside and uh, while I'm sitting here enjoying the cigar, I'm kind of uh, looking over my milkweed plants over here, looking for uh, monarch caterpillars, believe it or not. I do a little bit of butterfly husbandry, as strange as that sounds. Um, I'm just taking in everything that this cigar has to offer, and, and it's just been incredible. Um, the, 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 the taste of of jasmine tea and floral essence in this cigar is just over the top and, and yet there's nothing mild about it. It's really an, an, an in-your-face intense cigar but nothing harsh. The draw has just opened up wonderfully. It's, it's still moderately stiff drawing, but as you can see, I don't really have to work excessively at getting smoke out of the cigar, which is, which is just wonderful. Excuse me. Um, in front of me, actually, there are a couple of plants here, which I, I don't know what the genus um, off the top of my head. I only know them as uh, as sweet olive, and oh, many times a year they blossom in these tiny little flowers that just have this pungent, sweet, intoxicating aroma. And and if I could distill that into um, a, a a a a viscous liquid. And describe and and describe the taste of this cigar. It would be nothing short of of a floral essence, um, like a um, like an essential oil 
um, with just, a, 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 again, a, a wonderful creaminess that I just cannot describe. This cigar has just elevated my mood um, to 11. I just, I, I can't tell you how, how pleasing it is to have such a wonderful, luscious cigar. I just want to smoke it till it drops. So that's what I wanted to add. Um, I, I, I really, I really, I, I don't know how to top that. Um, I don't know how to describe it any differently. I can just tell you that. Uh, um, oh, I guess if if. Taba Cuba were putting out cigars like this today and they cost me 30 or 40 bucks, well it'd be worth it because uh, this cigar has just been, as, as almost every one of these that I've ever smoked, have just been over the top. Man, am I glad that I chose to smoke this today. So that's about it for the first third. We'll uh, drill, up, drill away at it for a little while longer and uh, see whether anything new emerges. And um, other than that, I'm just going to enjoy a, just a damn beautiful night, evening, and, uh, and, 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 and a fantastic... I, I hate to use the term, 100 points are hard. Excellent. Be back. So tonight is no different than any other. I've got uh, the hummingbirds just doing battle over the uh, feeders that uh, my wife has out. It's pretty funny if you've ever noticed how aggressive these little birds are. There's uh, one particular male with a uh, yellow collar that uh, just protects these feeders as if there's a, a real shortage of uh, sugar water in them. And uh, he'll take four or five other birds on at the same time and chase them off. And he'll sit, sometimes perch on the wire. Uh, you know, there he comes in. Anytime one of the birds comes in from one of the other plants, he, uh, he comes up over my left shoulder. He comes in off of a... Uh, either off of my tangerine tree or, uh, or one of the other trees that I have over my left shoulder and, uh, and just comes in here and uh, goes toe to toe with them. It's pretty funny. I was hoping to get a good battle scene for you. Unfortunately, they move so fast that they can be extremely difficult to catch on camera. There he is. He's the only one who can go up there and get a taste in peace. So no one else will take him on. Getting himself a rather long draft there. Maybe he'll get a break. Some of the other birds will be able to uh, squeak in there and get a little bit. He likes that little twig. Every time someone else comes into the picture, off he goes. He's a beautiful little guy.
Nope, there he is again. Every time someone comes back into the picture, off he goes. Protecting his nectar. I must admit, I've had a rather grand time enjoying my cigar and watching this aggressive little creature take after anyone who's uh, willing to challenge him at the feeder. So I'm having a lot of fun with my uh, wildlife here while enjoying my cigar. I don't know why these critters give me such a thrill, but they're a real kick to watch. And considering how aggressive they are, they're actually quite a thrill to watch do combat. These guys are absolutely fearless. Well, I'm well beyond the halfway point at this point in time. And the cigar has transformed itself again, largely into a more classic oat and honey taste. Uh, there still is a very rich, creamy, viscous texture associated with the cigar. The draw has opened up tremendously. Smoke is no longer a minimum. Like I said, I can't tell you what I've enjoyed most, the cigar or uh, watching the dominant uh, hummingbird uh, protect his nectar. The cigar has never been short on flavor or robustness. But it's certainly now picking up a considerable amount of flavor. The oat and honey now may be a, a, a pinch of pepper and a, occasional lemon curd in the flavor. It, it seems to have developed more into a a, a more classic, very strong, robust cigar. The floral notes, while they might remain, are simply overshadowed by a, a considerable amount of strength here. Uh, more classic tobacco, uh, getting bit by mosquitoes, uh, more classic tobacco currently that, that oat and honey sweetness and uh, uh, again straightforward tobacco it's it's actually turned into an incredibly powerful cigar I, I would have never believed, would have believed, that this much transition could uh, could take place in uh, in a single cigar. Now, to be fair, I was actually getting more enjoyment out of the more floral, a bit more subtle uh, flavors prior to the cigar really, really turning on the strength. But let's see what happens. Um, I've actually been smoking it fairly aggressively. Because the cigar has been so stiff, I've just, I've, I've really been going at it um, because it's just too good to set down. might be killing it off some with uh, 
with simply how aggressively I've been smoking it. Now that I'm talking a little bit to the camera and uh, slowing my smoking down some, um, it, it does feel like some of the harsh natures of the uh, of the strength and, and, and intensity has uh, has mitigated somewhat. Tonight, as usual for me, I'm enjoying my uh, Bex uh, non-alcoholic beer. hard to stay away from. And it's back. It must have just been a little bit of uh, Ligero or something that I smoked through. Right back to where it was before. Ah, incredible. Just, just been a wonderful cigar. I guess you can really tell uh, in some of my reviews when I really enjoy a cigar. be honest with you, I've never been disappointed by one of these. And that says a lot. Today, I may only smoke two of these a year. Um, to, it, it, at least one. I smoke at least one of these annually. But uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes more. Uh, this will be the first one for 2017. And uh, man, am I glad that I picked it up tonight. So I'm going to watch a little more of the wildlife, and um, I'll come back with some final thoughts. Till then. So it's uh, just simply gotten too dark outside uh, for me to continue out there. I've got a couple inches left of the cigar. The last inch or so has just turned into this luscious, very thin thick um, buttercream mint flavor. Uh, the cigar has just been incredibly intense for about the past inch. I mean so much so that I the, the finish is so long on the cigar I can still taste so much of it that if, if I really allowed my palate to clear before drawing on the cigar once more, the cigar would probably go out. The cigar has just been a delight. And I would think at this point in time that I'd start getting some, some bitter harshness that would cause me to want to put the cigar down. There's been only one drawback to it. The, gar the cigar has been so unctuous and so intense that I gotta tell you, I'm just, I'm, I'm cigar maxed. I'm, I'm really glad that it's, uh, it's not like I smoked this at a hearf somewhere where I really couldn't follow it up. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm actually gonna do something probably sacrilegious here. Um, I'm probably just gonna let this cigar go out and I might hit it again tomorrow because it's, it, again, it is just, it's so intense that um, it's, it's just over the top. It's over the top intense. Um, I'm going to take a couple of more puffs off of it. And uh, like I said, I think I'm going to let it go out. I'm actually going to, it's so dry in here that uh, I probably shouldn't have any issue 
I'll bet you I can spark it back to life uh, tomorrow for uh, another 15 minutes, 20 minutes worth of uh, worth of enjoyment. I'm I'm actually very happy to leave it where it is. It it just almost seems like it's wasted on me now at this point in time. The smoke is rich and luscious. Um, again, it's just, it's been over the top. There's really not, nothing else that I can say about it. So, uh, I will leave it with that. There's a couple inches left in the stick. It's definitely not done. Uh, hopefully it won't get uh, spoiled by uh, sitting here on the desk overnight. I've just had enough. I can only, uh, I can only take so much. The finish is just so long and, uh, and actually so powerful that uh, and no buzz, that's not it. It's just uh, my sinuses, my mouth. Um, what else can I say? So thanks for joining me. It was a great cigar. I'll try to put up a little bit of footage there of the... Uh, uh, of, uh, of the birds, hopefully uh, we will have gotten those uh, edited into the uh, uh, into the mix, and uh, that's it. Signing off from the Grimpen Mire. It's uh, Ray for Cigar Climatology. Thanks again for joining me.